This video is sponsored by Paradox Interactive. Hey everybody, it's Party Lead, and today we're taking a look at the brand new Stellaris DLC, Overlord. As the name suggests, Overlord largely focuses around the concept of supreme empires that lord over others, taking what they need from subservient vassals, typically in return for some degree of protection or perhaps economic or technological assistance. While the vassal system is seeing an overhaul as a part of the free update that everybody will be getting alongside the DLC, the DLC itself will add many additional layers to this aspect of the game, alongside three new enclaves to treat with, five new origins to choose from, and some awesome new technological marvels to pursue too, from ways to transport your ships across the galaxy in the blink of an eye, to orbital rings that support planets within them, and hyper relays that connect adjacent systems, allowing your fleets to move swiftly between them. If you're interested in grabbing the DLC or learning more about it, don't hesitate to check out the link in the description and pinned comment down below. Today we'll be focusing on the Overlord-Vassal relationship, how best to become one or the other, what benefits to consider of either, and what pitfalls to keep an eye out for as well. With timestamps to jump between sections down below and no more time to waste, let's begin. Obtaining Vassals The idea of having vassals is nothing new to Solaris, but the whole process has been tweaked in various ways, and the Overlord DLC adds many more options on top of said tweaks. You can still declare a subjugation war on a target empire that you're superior to, where winning would have them bend the knee, or you can offer a diplomatic route instead. You'll need plenty of influence in order to do this, so make sure you're maximizing your monthly influence production as best as possible. Increase your force projection by building more military ships, declare rivals of empires you have no interest in treating with, and avoid any frivolous agreements that drain your monthly influence production. Once you have enough influence, you'll still need to consider a few other factors that can work with or against you when it comes to subjugating another empire, and they're worth keeping in mind if you want to try and secure the most profitable relationships especially. Vassals aren't as simple as they once were, and the contract between each vassal and their overlord can be fine-tuned in a few different ways now. The details of the contract mixed with these aforementioned factors will determine how likely the target of your request is to accept or decline. So. The more egregious the contract is in favor of the Overlord, the more you'll need these other factors to offset the negatives. The easiest of these negatives to take care of has to do with distance. If your closest systems are adjacent to each other, that is to say, they're one jump apart, you won't see any such penalty to the negotiations. But if there's a gap between your empires, this negative can make quite the difference. Note that this has nothing to do with your borders touching, it's about the number of jumps it would take between your closest systems. So even if your borders touch in multiple locations, but it takes, say, three jumps to get between your closest systems, you'll see a negative modifier. The solution to this is simple, in theory, just expand to control the systems between you and your target, or let them do the same, and this penalty will disappear. Sometimes you might have to deal with a third party or buffer empire blocking you from touching tips, but usually it's a simple enough solution. The other relatively easy modifier to tackle has to do with your relations. If you're hostile to one another or otherwise have a negative disposition such as wary or suspicious, you'll see that reflected in the acceptance modifier. In the case of hostility, the diplomatic route is basically impossible, while wary empires can be convinced by giving them a better offer. But why not set yourself up with the upper hand? Sending an envoy over to improve relations will take time, but eventually it'll turn this negative around as opinions improve. If the target of your subjugation is more populous, they'll feel less inclined to accept terms they don't like, and this can only be overcome by bending to their will, and as you modify the terms of the agreement, you'll change the resulting loyalty based on your decisions. These numbers are all variables depending on your target's ethics and traits, and the differences between your two people's beliefs and capabilities, and sometimes entire options will be unavailable or restricted based on things like empire ethics. So you'll want to play around and see exactly where you or your target might be willing to bend without giving up too much if you're desperately hoping for a vassal. Sometimes even a small bit of economic support can tip the deal in your favor, while at other times you'll need to promise to involve yourself in all of your vassal's wars or even share your sensor data with them. Either way, this loyalty number is multiplied by 2 and is added to the list of modifiers. You can use this to really haggle and get the exact deal you want, but 
keep in mind that you want your vassals to be loyal over the long term. Otherwise, you're doing all this haggling for somebody who's just looking for an opportunity to betray you eventually. Keep in mind that if somebody's in a federation, subjugation pretty much goes out the window as an option. But otherwise, even in the early game, it's not all that difficult to obtain a vassal. Just be careful about that initial agreement though. It can only be renegotiated every five years and an existing vassal will consider the difference in your power and the impact of the changes will weigh heavily on their decision to agree to the new terms or not. If the new terms are less favorable to the vassal than the old ones, the negative modifiers to acceptance can be almost impossible to overcome and your desperations of the past might come to haunt you in the future. Now, looking at this agreement screen as you tweak the baseline agreement, some of the ways in which a vassal can be useful or a detriment are pretty obvious, but things go well beyond just these simple terms. So let's discuss. The Costs and Benefits of Having Vassals Just to reiterate, everything you see on this screen represents the baseline relationship between overlord and vassal. With the terms laid out here, you can exert a fair bit of control over your vassal, demand a tithe of some form or another, or otherwise glean benefits and offer support. Prohibiting integration means you won't ever be able to bring the subject under your fold, but it is one of the biggest impacts to their loyalty and how likely they are to accept the offer in the first place. If you have no intention of taking direct control over the subject's empire through integration, this is an easy element to sacrifice. Diplomatic freedom ranges from complete independence on one end to absolute restrictions on the other. So on one hand, the subject proceeds as usual with diplomatic elements, while on the other, they aren't allowed their own foreign policy. Right down the middle, the subject can still have independent diplomatic relations, but they'll be forced to follow their overlord into federations and the galactic community if their overlord decides to join it, and they'll also be forced to vote the same way as their overlord, granting them more sway in these political theaters. The subject's right to expand its territory ranges from complete freedom to a complete lockdown, and in the middle, the option to expand at the cost of paying their overlord some influence each time. Allowing your subject to grow stronger is a double-edged sword. On the one hand, their strength is yours to benefit from, if they're loyal. But on the other hand, if they don't like being under your thumb, that increased power can be wielded against you all the same. Figure out your ideological differences or similarities and see if this subject is likely to stay by your side for the long haul and make the call accordingly. Even then, you never want to get them too much larger than you. It'll make negotiating new contracts hard and you never know when they might want their independence. Resources can be shifted in either direction with rarer materials having a larger impact on the acceptability of the deal. Consider what your future subject actually does best and try to exploit that while maybe, if necessary, giving them support where they're weak. But keep in mind that these conversations are happening on a percentage basis. So if your target subject isn't really good at the sciences, is it really worth pressuring them for 20 to 40 to 30 to 50 percent of their scientific output? Probably not. You might be able to glean some other benefits elsewhere instead that are actually worth something. Now, you won't always have access to details here, and you might not even be able to make an educated guess as to what this future subject is best at. But when you do have access to the data, make sure to use it. Further down, you can decree which conflicts will force the other party into war. These are split into requiring no military involvement, involvement during defensive wars only, during offensive wars only, or finally, during all wars. Don't ask militarily weak subjects to join your wars. What little benefit they could provide there might be better replaced with a better economic or political contribution instead. Also consider the potential threat a subject might face. If you agree to help them in their defensive wars and they're surrounded by multiple powerful warmongering empires, you can bet you'll find yourself fighting their wars more often than not. Again, you won't always have access to all this information right away, especially if you're making vassals in the early game, but if you do have access to this intel, make your decisions accordingly. As you can see, sending an envoy to infiltrate and gather intel isn't a terrible idea, as it can give you at least some insight with regards to decisions you might want to make when the time to subjugate comes. Moving on, Holdings Limit determines how many holdings you can have on your subject's planets, holdings being a building slot with specific special options that can be quite valuable in a few different ways. The cost to loyalty from permissible number of holdings grows quite quickly, and your choice of buildings can have further impacts on monthly loyalty changes, both 
positive and negative, and there are upkeep costs to worry about as well. But these holding buildings can help generate resources, research, and much more for you as the Overlord, and it can be well worth the investment. Note that while some holdings are being added for free, many more are available based on the DLC you have, including 12 from the Overlord DLC specifically, and there are many that pair with details of your empire to provide specific options not otherwise available. Finally, you can choose to share your sensor data with your subject or keep yours to yourself while the subject shares theirs with you. Independent sensor data still has the Overlord receive their vassal's sensor data, so to clarify, you'll gain vision and information from your subject either way, while potentially leaving your subjects blind to what you see and know. Beyond this, you can take a look at some of these specializations, only available with the Overlord DLC. While you can still only propose a protectorate status to empires far behind you in technology, and while regular vassal and tributary type vassals are still options, each with their own limitations regarding the finer points of the agreement between parties, there are three additional vassal types being introduced with the DLC. None of the three specialist type vassals can ever be integrated, nor can they have their expansion be restricted. The contribution of resources between parties will have minimums in either direction too, depending on their types, and you'll also sometimes see limitations with regards to conflicts you can ask specialist vassals to join, or wars of theirs that you'll be able to assist in. Sure, this is just like setting the terms of the agreement yourself, but some empires will dislike specific vassal types, and this will reduce the likelihood of them accepting that designation. Another unique element to these specializations comes in the form of perks. Each specialization is broken down into three tiers that vassals shift between by gaining or losing XP based on their loyalty, crossing increasing thresholds to get to higher and higher tiers. A loyal vassal gains XP per month at a rate determined by their loyalty. High positive loyalty will add to their XP more quickly than low positive loyalty, while extremely negative loyalty will take away from it faster than slightly negative loyalty. Again. You can see the value of having a loyal vassal, especially as you investigate these perks. Some are beneficial to the subject first, indirectly benefiting the Overlord, while others are more directly beneficial for the Overlord exclusively. Some perks unlock higher level tech for immediate research for the subject, while others increase the likelihood of finding specific resources or caches, or improve the capabilities of appropriate leaders, chip firing rates, etc., etc., all dependent on the specialization type. We'll get into more details about specialization in the next section, but if you're the Overlord, you should know that Bulwark Vassals will make Starbase upgrades cheaper and faster, Scholarium Vassals will speed up your research rates, and Prospectorium Vassals will speed up and cheapen mining station construction. Keep in mind as well, of course, that as your Vassal gets higher and higher on this tier list, they'll be performing better, they'll be doing more, and because you're their Overlord, you'll be benefiting from their benefits. So don't ignore all these other benefits listed under these perks. They indirectly benefit you as well. You may have noticed the mention of Overlord Relay Network modifiers in the case of some of these perks too. These are additional benefits that can be taken advantage of if the Overlord builds and connects the Hyper Relay megastructure in the subject's capital. Not something available right at the start of the game, but something worth keeping in mind when the option eventually becomes available. Keep in mind that having multiple vassals will negatively impact the per-month loyalty growth for all of your vassals unless you have the Shared Destiny Ascension perk. It's a representation of your vassals feeling slighted by your divided attention and shouldn't be taken lightly. One more issue to consider is how trade with your vassals, especially disloyal ones, is basically off the table. You'll be able to use their loyalty as a bargaining chip and you'll even be able to ask them to publicly pledge loyalty in an effort to increase their monthly loyalty gain, but you'll find even the simplest of requests for a handful of resources will be met with total refusal. Yes, this changes as a vassal becomes more loyal, but I mention this is something to keep in mind if you already have a good thing going where one of your neighbors is a reliable trade partner. It's a relationship you're going to at least temporarily ruin in the interest of longer term gains, turning them into a vassal. Now, if things spiral out of control, of course, and there is no long term, then you've lost that trade deal and you end up with a vassal who hates you and tries to overthrow you eventually. Again, Loyalty makes a huge difference, and disloyal vassals can band together or even pledge secret oaths to outside empires in an attempt to overthrow you. 
You'll want to make sure you've given your subject some reason to love you. If not a favorable deal, perhaps use the appropriate holdings like aid agencies and overlord garrisons to help in this regard. At the very least, send an envoy to improve relations with your subject as that has an impact on monthly loyalty change too. And remember, if you find yourself without use for a subject, either because you've outgrown their value or they're just dragging you into more trouble than they're worth, you can always release them to fend for themselves. Meanwhile, if you're having trouble fending for yourself, you might want to consider being a vassal. You can always offer yourself up as a vassal, though similar acceptance modifiers apply as when you're approaching a target as a prospective overlord. A wary empire, for example, won't be quick to accept you as a vassal, doubtful of your true intentions. So, it's not a bad idea to send an envoy over to improve relations first. Empires and federations or federation builders might be reluctant too, and the loyalty modifier does not make a difference when you're offering to be a subject. Starting with the Imperial Fiefdom Origin available with the Overlord DLC, you start as one of many loyal vassals to a powerful Overlord, even giving you a chance to pick between the specializations we discussed earlier. Apart from potential military, commercial, and technological support from the baseline agreement itself, specializations can really make being a vassal interesting in many ways. Bulwarks are military-focused, and their perks include, but are not limited to, improvements to starbase damage output and hull strength, better shield performance in friendly territory, quick access to star fortress and modular engineering and eventually citadel tech, improved admirals, better ship performance in friendly territory, additional ship designs, and debuffs to enemy ships in friendly territory too. All this while providing starbase, build, and upgrade cost reductions for their overlord right from the lowest tier. Unfortunately, each tier upgrade comes at the cost of energy, mineral, and food production. The Scalarium specialists are focused on science output, seeing faster research rates and more research options at the cost of military capacity, as well as increased ship upkeep and building costs. Their perks increase the Overlord's research rates right off the bat, while improving their own research rates as well. They'll also see an increased likelihood of finding science caches on planets within their territory, and these are caches that need to be investigated and can speed research up tremendously, reducing how long it takes for tech to complete being researched before the extra stored research points from the cache runs out. Their upgrades to these caches and to scientists and anti-AI defense mechanisms unlock down the line too. Finally, the Prospectorium focuses on resource acquisition at the cost of research rates, giving their overlord better mining station build costs and speeds right off the bat, while increasing the chance of finding resources, reducing planetary build times and costs, adding research options, upgrading governors, and enabling strip mining, among other options. Again, since more perks unlock at higher tiers, you'll want to be a loyal vassal so that you can gain the XP needed to use these higher tier perks. Sure, some overlords will be ruthless and you'll want to seek independence, potentially pledging a secret oath to a foreign empire in the hopes that they'll go to war for you, but a good overlord can actually be quite the boon, through your agreement and through unique events that spawn from the relationship with your overlord. And even as a vassal, you'll be able to propose changes to your agreement every five years with your opinions of each other, loyalty, and proposed changes impacting the likelihood of success. You can even trade loyalty as a currency if you're in desperate need of something from your overlord. Now, something to consider when it comes to trading loyalty is your current tier, if you're a specialist vassal type. Higher tiers come with some debuffs, and if those are hurting you more than the buffs are helping you, you might want to find ways to reduce your loyalty and start losing XP instead. On the flip side, if you want some of those higher tier perks, you might opt to publicly pledge loyalty, or directly add to the loyalty in exchange for something or the other. This higher loyalty will increase the rate of XP gain, taking you to higher tiers faster and faster. Just because you're a vassal doesn't mean your game is over. If anything, there are countless new ways to play and have fun, even with a bent knee. I hope this video has given you some insight into Stellaris Overlord, and all the Lord and subject related changes coming with the DLC, as well as the free update. Don't hesitate to leave a like and a comment down below if so, and feel free to ask any questions or share any thoughts of your own as well. And if you'd like to learn more or grab the DLC for yourself, feel free to use the link in the description and pinned comment down below. For more strategy gaming content, including tons of paradox, news, and gameplay, don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel, and if you enjoyed this video, you might like the one I've got linked on screen right now too. As always, 
A massive thanks goes out to all of my channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.